Simply said, there are two ways to use tables. We can use them as objects and we can use them as lists. In this video I will be talking about using them as lists. And in the next video I will be talking about objects. Tables are basically lists and we can put data in those lists. Let's start with only the three callbacks. In love.load we create a table called fruits. You can create a table with curly brackets. So fruit equals curly brackets. Now I want to fill the table with strings of fruit. We can do this in multiple ways. One way is to put it directly in the table when creating it. Between the curly brackets put the string apple and banana separated by a comma. Another way to add a variable to a table is with the function table.insert. The first argument is the table, the second argument is the value you want to add. So table.insert fruits pair. Now I want to draw these strings on the screen. In the love.draw callback write love.graphics.print. With this function we can draw text. The first argument is the text we want to draw. The second and third arguments are the x and y position. I'll do 280. Run the game and you'll see that test is written on the screen. Now we want to write what's inside our table. We can access the values of our table by writing the table's name, followed by brackets. Inside those brackets we write the position of the value we want. Like I said before, tables are lists of values. We first added apple, so that's on the first position of the list. So if we want to get the apple, we write 1 inside the brackets. So replace test with fruits, brackets, and inside those brackets, the number 1. Run the game and you'll see it now says apple. If you write 2 instead of 1, it will say banana. And with 3, it will say beer. With 4, it will give an error. This is because there's nothing on position 4 in the table. When that's the case, it's nil, no value. Replace 4 with 1 again. Now we want to draw all three fruits at the same time. We could copy the function for each fruit we have, but imagine if we had 100 fruits in our table. Luckily, we can use something that will make it a lot shorter, for loops. For loops are ways to repeat certain code a number of times. Let's explore for loops in the love.load for now. We write a for loop like this, for i equals 1, comma, 10, do and then finishing the for loop with an AND. Inside our for loop we print i and run the game. If you look at the prints it will say 1 to 10. So how does a for loop work? First we say that a variable is a certain value, so i equals 1. We can start at any number, even negative numbers. If you do i equals minus 20 and run the game, you will now see it counts from minus 20 to 10. Of course the variable can be named anything, but in for loops it's very common to simply use i. The second number is the limit. If i is higher than this number, the for loop stops. There's actually also a third number. This is by how much i should increase. So if you add comma 4 behind 10, you will see that it now jumps 4 numbers every loop. By default this is 1. Delete the 4 as we won't be needing it now and change minus 20 back to 1. So now let's loop through our table. Our table currently has 3 values, so let's change the 10 to a 3. Inside our print type fruits with an i in the brackets. So now every loop it will print a value of fruits on position i. Run the game and you'll see that it says apple, banana, pear. So now we loop through the table's values. But what if we add or remove a value to our table? How can we make sure that we loop through all the table's values? We need to loop from position 1 to the length of the table. We can get the table's length by writing a number sign, followed by the table's name. We replace tree with number sign fruit, and you will see that it still prints all the values. So now it doesn't matter if we remove or add values to our table, it will always loop through all the values. It's important to note that the variable of the for loop is only available inside the for loop. If you print i outside of the for loop, you will see that it says nil. Let's get back to love.draw. Copy the for loop from love.load and remove the print. Move the love.graphics.print inside the for loop and replace the 1 in the brackets with an i. If you run the game, you will see that it now draws multiple text. The problem is that it's all drawn on the same position. Let's fix this. 
Let's draw them under each other. And the argument for the i position adds plus 50 times i. So now the text will be drawn on i position 80 plus 50 times the current loop. This means that in the first loop, where i equals 1, it will draw the text on 130. Then in the next loop, i equals 2, and it will draw the text on 180. And in the third loop, on 230. Run the game. You can now see that it draws all the text nicely separated from each other. Let's add another fruit. In love.load, add table.insert fruits pineapple. Run the game again. And you can now see that it also draws pineapple as well. We can remove a value from the table with the function table.remove. The first argument is the table you want to remove something from. The second argument is the position of the table you want to remove. So if we want to remove banana, we type table.remove fruits2 because banana is on the second position of the table. Now that banana is removed, pear has moved to the second position and pineapple to the third. We can also add or change values by assigning values to the table's position directly. So for example, fruits1 equals tomato. There's actually an other way and an easier way to loop through a table. In love.load type 4i, v in e pairs parentheses and inside the parentheses fruits do and Inside the loop, print i and v, and run the game. This for loop loops, or what we also call iterate, through all the values of the table. It tells us at what iteration we're at. v is the value of fruits on position i. In other words, v equals fruits i. This is useful, because this way we don't have to type fruits every time we want to use it in the for loop. Replace the for loop in love.draw with the for loop in love.load and replace fruits i with v. As you can see, it gives us the same result. When looping through tables, it's preferred to use the e pairs loop. That's it for tables as list. In the next episode, we're going to use them as objects. Thanks for watching.